That was Desi Gillespie's night in Tunisia. Yeah. Yeah. You need to go to the island. I had a revelation just the other day. Oh, how I miss the island. I got to find a way. I've searched the distance to find my way home. I couldn't make it. I felt so alone. I gotta get to the island where my passion lies. I wanna get to the island. Nothing did before. I wanna get to the island. My dreams are realized. Take me back to the island. My love is waiting there. Summer, winter, I couldn't play the part. I got to go back to where I left my heart. So tomorrow, you'll hear me say, No more dreaming, I'll be on my way. I gotta get to the island where my passion lies. I wanna get to the island. My dreams are realized. Take me back to the <laughs> Nothing can compare. I want to go to the island. My love is waiting <laughs> As many times as I've been there, the roads remain strange. Going east, when I think we're headed south, Passing fields of the same farmers who lift and shake their heads. I'm sure I was born here. Though when I hold out my hand, the fish swim away. The men toss someone behind a partition, and only one aunt claims she still loves me. The <laughs> spaces behind houses carry the light in spare pockets, and a quiet holds the hills like rakes at lunchtime. I dare not ask which trace leads to the sea. Innocent wave washing the same sand, Manzanilla, Nearo, Gasparine. Only 50 square miles, but it can go on forever. Machetes looking for something to cut besides cane. <laughs> If you're old enough to remember airports when the planes didn't come right up so you could just walk on. You had to cross the tarmac. So there was a piece of glass upstairs fronting a room where your family could go and all right. It's it's almost like they knew you weren't coming back, you know. But they dressed like they were traveling too. Waving gallery. Up there, I could make out my mother in her favorite dress, the one she wore in pictures taken 30 years apart. And Doris, her friend who had warned her not to cry, a white kerchief dabbing at her eyes. Behind them stood Uncle, waving the keys to the house and the hillman on the same ring. Across the tarmac, the line of travelers moved slowly, and the hills seemed closer. I think I made out people in houses, children in yards who could see me from that distance, going away to study English, as if it were not the language spoken here. <laughs> so the book takes you on a kind of trip, right? It's looking back to the island and then thinking about how we came to leave. And I know how it feels for 
immigrants. You go home and you feel kind of guilty. You feel like if, if you hadn't left, things would have been better. But that's not how it goes, is it? What did Robert Frost say, the road not taken? That's how it goes, you just don't know. And if I hadn't come to America, I wouldn't have that beautiful son of mine sitting over there. This is in Washington, D.C., where I went to school at Howard. And you know how college life is like, right? You live with these roommates and, Jesus, Lord, the, 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 the ashtray is just overflowing all the time. And, and we had a refrigerator, and, and my friends brought some women of strange repute home one, one night. And one of them opened the fridge and she looked in and there was some old bottle of pepper sauce in it. She said, what's that black shit in that bottle? <laughs> Life was hard. <laughs> so this was one of my roommates. This was Blue, busboy, at the Shoreham Hotel in DC, where friends got him a job. Blue never figured how to slide the tray off his shoulder onto the conveyor without breaking dishes. There's a harshness to this country, he said. After his girlfriend put him out one very cold night, when one of her Muslim sisterhood threatened to tell. And in the school of architecture, those books, those hard courses, calculus, and professors who frowned upon students falling asleep in classes, he tried until one day he went to work not realizing it was his day off. Okay. And that night he dreamed of back home and pumpkins. Pumpkin, he said, coming out my pores. I was going to read last round, but Esther killed that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but, she did it, but she did it beautifully. Beautifully. This is another roommate, Dr. P, we call him. Underneath the Calvert Street Bridge, our roommate Peter and a white woman who looked younger in the bar, both <laughs> tipsy, are going at it. It's snowing hard, a postcard scene, the stately hotel showroom aglow, and along the span at intervals, antique street lamps shining on black railings and wet cobblestones. The sounds of Peter's grunts echo in the underpass. The woman, her coat and dress bunched at the waist, suddenly declaring she doesn't like Negroes. <laughs> You're Spanish, aren't you? She mutters. <laughs> and Dr. P, as we call him, ever mindful, even in distress, whispers, see, see. <laughs> Snow blowing off. <laughs> The, sound like you, right? Snow, snow blowing off the embankment into his ear and onto his freezing behind. This is a poem for my son. Concern. The forceps left two bruises on my son's head, visible till he was about six weeks old. What kind of doctor, I ask, grabs a kid like that, pulls him like meat from the grill when it's done? Two green spots, as if the tongues were old, the first thing they could find. I find myself looking, now the boy's 40, for further signs of damage. <laughs> so far, none. <laughs> It's not easy, guys. It's not easy. Okay. I'm going to do a poem for um, some of the poems. A lot of the poems in this book are sort of tributes to writers. The poem for Chinua Achebe. And well, maybe I'll read it since you. <laughs> It's 
called The Old Ways in Memory of Achebe. And it helps if you have read the book, Things Fall Apart. Yes, but if you haven't, it's okay. Just hold on. The Old Ways in Memory of Achebe. I would travel north to hear the great writer whose story about the champion wrestler Okonkwo set the bar so high no rival could take him down. And if my girlfriend was still living there, I would spend the weekend in Providence, recalling how hard it is to find decent fish in a city so near the sea. I could bear anything, the steep, narrow staircase up to her bedroom, her mattress on the attic floor. But now I hear Chinua has died. I don't think I could stand the memory of her roommate's chatter. It brings to mind the children of the evil forest thrown there for being different. So I stay home and read how the hero chose which wife by putting his stool in front of her door. That's how they did it. This is a poem for Edwidge Dantica. And now this for Edwidge. And if you haven't read Edwidge, please run out quickly. <laughs> Sometimes it must feel like your fight for independence will never end. That liberty will keep eluding you like a goat that runs into the sea. The preacher says it is your voodoo that is killing you, that keeps you scraping and digging and having to subdue the enemy in your own house. But who can deny you your home, where even in hunger your mouths sing and drums beat the sweetest rara, where your soldiers once marched over the cliffs to their death in the sea. And now this, your roof falling in while you were combing the children's hair, sending them off to school, while you were opening your stall to sell the few grains that still managed to grow. Here comes this rain of rocks upon your head, this shaking of the ground as if God does not know his own strength. As if he were dancing carelessly in his house above the mountains where your cries could never reach. From across the river, help comes. Who could pretend not to hear such a breaking up of earth? Such a split run all the way from Pétionville to Jack Mel, through the belly of Port-au-Prince, that where it ended it seemed it could never be joined again. A whole new island, I tell you, is what you need. New roof, new flooring, new everything, new hills, new flowers, new yard with no fence to say that this is yours and that is theirs. Someone forever claiming what you work so hard for. A place you can bring all those boat people back to, where you can make a huge bonfire of all the bad memories of Papa this and baby that, the furry <laughs> slippers of their madams. But never mind my wishes. This is where you are now. This is your sweet and sour, your grief on top of grief. Your little girl dancing to show the amputation was a success. Amazing how you sing through your sorrow, how you still fling your behind in the carnival when it comes and say your prayers however you remember them, whatever sacrifice you must make, chicken, goat, your own blood saying, not me, not my Haiti, blood coming out of her pores. Her mountains march naked up and down beside the river that divides the island as you put it back together. The plate that shifted that day, the world broke into a million pieces. How I can tell for Samantha, you must be from that place 
full of caves that echo and where when it rains Arangues floods. In your voice I hear rivers fill up, the sea coming back for more. You must have gone running down a repo's steep sides, its tongue-tied villagers calling after you, don't go, don't go, just before they started drinking rubbing alcohol. <laughs> ah, girl from between mountains, you came away, your passage booked by someone who must have heard the choir in old St. Margaret's church singing, someone who wanted to pass you through the world cities first, before you spread wild like Tanya, the leaf that overgrows every road back home. Thank you, guys. Okay, so my cousin is back there with all the books, Nancy, and she'll help you. And please mingle and talk. And um, I want to thank everyone. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. Thanks, Samantha. Thanks, David and Neil and Wesley and everyone who's here. Thanks, Susanna and Esther. And any name I didn't call, forgive me, but you guys are just beautiful. Thank you.